Well, let's go to the doctor, shall we? Can we go to the doctor? Mr. Bennett? Yes. Come on in. Thank you. Take a seat. Thanks. My name's Dr. Forster. Hello. I've had a referral from your GP, uh, Dr. Sims? Uh, Dr. Stims. And you're at St. Leonard's Medical Practice? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm at St. Thomas. Right. So, yes, I've had a referral from your GP from some initial tests that you've done. Yes. Uh, so today I'd like to do a medical history with you. Then if we could get you booked in to do some blood tests and some urine samples, and then we'll get you booked in for some memory tests as well. Right. Okay. And then depending, obviously, how they go, we'll then book you again, maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. Right. And how often do I have? I mean, really, it depends on how quickly we get a diagnosis. At this stage, we're just ruling things out rather than ruling things in. So it can take a while. But uh, <laughs> I've got a job. I can't come every two weeks. Yeah, we do do early mornings and evenings. Right. OK. Right. So are you OK to carry on with the medical history? Y yes, I thought I did one with a GP, but... Uh... Yeah, we do one too, in case we miss anything. Right. OK, so do you have any medical conditions? No, only what's um, going on here. Any historical medical conditions, whether treated or not? No. Any chronic illness or disease in immediate family? That's diabetes, cancer. No, nothing. Are your parents still alive? Uh, no. And what ages did they die? Uh, my mother was um, my mother was eighty one, and my father were. Huh. Sorry, I um. My father was um. Rough ballpark is fine. Yes. Sorry. Uh, late seventies, I, th I think. Do you smoke? I haven't smoked for thirty years. Do you drink alcohol? Occasional glass of wine. How many units a week? I, I, I don't really know what a unit is. Two and a half units to a large glass of wine? Right. Um, five, seven and a half units. Any medications? No. Any allergies? No. OK, and as far as the uh, onset of symptoms, when would you say you first started to notice? Well, as I said, uh, uh, it was a few weeks ago. I, um, I, I'd, I'd been out driving and... Uh, well, I, I, been bit hazy and I stopped the car and I, I didn't quite know where I was and, uh, and I, it didn't last long, but, but, but uh, I have had another incident recently. Right. Yeah, I, different. I was, um, I, I went to reach for the cutlery and it, 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 it wasn't quite where I thought it was. Uh, right, would you say that's reflex or eyesight? I, I, I've got no idea. Any head trauma or accidents? No. Any headaches? No. Any tightness or pain in the chest? No. And how would you say your mood is? <laughs> well, it's not so good since I've been here, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just not... Right, that's fine. Uh, if you could just go down the corridor onto your left to the nurse's station for your blood sample and urine. Uh, I'm doing that now. Yes, please. Right, OK. Any questions? Uh, well, yes, I do. I do. I do have one question. Um, is, my daughter's concerned about whether or not I should be driving. Uh, legally, you don't have to let the DVLA know until you've had a diagnosis. Right. At this stage, you don't have a definite diagnosis. No. But I would say, considering your first episode was in a car, no. Right, thank you. Thank you. To your left. Thank you. What, what's the doctor not showing? Uh, I was going to say compassion as well, and she's being very quick when she should be patient. She's cause... quick, so the tempo thing comes up again, and yes? Um, the eye, con eye contact is also good, very, good very points. lacking. So what's, what's wrong with the eye contact? What's wrong with her eyes? Well, every, every time she says something, she's either looking at her screen, and yeah. then, she, I, then she flicks over the end of her sentence and looks over with a quite disconcerting face. and It shows that she doesn't really care. And straight off the bat as well, you know, the only line that she actually said fully to the other character was just like, come in and sit down. And then 
the rest yeah. of it, you're looking at the screen, not really caring. Yeah. Well, well done. Uh, well done. It's comic because it's sort of quite, quite extreme, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible that that could happen. And I'm, I'm seeing a few nods in the room. So, so people have some sense of being on the receiving end of some of that. Maybe the doctor's stressed or tired or whatever. What's interesting is the impact that it has on the scene. You, you notice it, 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 makes, it makes him stressed, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I love it. It's absolutely excellent. Right, do it again. So I want you to start again. Um, feet flat on the ground, please. Sorry. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Hello. All the time, uh, all the time you're taking notes. Yeah. I want to see you taking the notes. And I want to err uh, on the side of, uh, you know, as professional as possible. Yeah. So, uh, get, so don't, uh, don't, uh, as little sympathy as you can. Okay. Yeah. So she's absolutely professional. Let's, let's be fair to the NHS and, and have another go. And, uh, and, and this time, the, the rule is that you can have as much empathy for your patient as is possible within your professional... Sure. ..your professional relationship. So you can't tell him anything that's... You can't reassure him about something which you can't reassure him about. Mr Bennett? Yes. Come on in. Thank Take you. Take a seat. Thanks. I'm Dr Forster. I'll be your specialist. Oh, hello. I'm uh, Steve. Hi. Righty. Uh, so I have a GP referral from some tests that you've done. Yes. A couple of flags have come up, hence why you've been referred to me. OK. Um, and I've got a Dr Sims, is it? Uh, Stims is the T. Stims. Oh, probably just a typo from the other end. And can I just confirm your medical practice? Yes, St Thomas. OK. Right, so, today, ideally, what we'd like to do is if I could do a medical history with you. Right. And then we would like to do some bloods. OK. Not keen on bloods? <laughs> no, no, not, not my favourite, no. No, well, they're all friendly here. Um, and then we'll have a urine sample as well, and then we'll get you booked in for some memory tests. OK. And then, dependent on the results from that, you'll then come back in maybe a couple of weeks or a month or so, or, and then just ruling things out at the moment. I mean, hence the bloods and urine. Yes. Make sure that we don't have any infections and that sort of thing. It's, it's just I have a job. It's difficult. Yeah. It? Yeah, no. Um, so we do some early morning and late evening surgeries. Right. Um, I can also do a GP letter for you, like let you get your GP to do a letter for your employer. OK. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yes. Great. So, I'm going to do a medical history with you today. I thought I did one with the GP. Yeah, it might feel like you're repeating yourself a bit, but we just want to cover all bases, make sure that we've got a full record for you, because, uh, you know, you are in my hands now. OK. okay? Yes, yes. Lovely. Right. Do you have any medical conditions? Uh, no, well, apart from what's happening now, no. And any historical medical conditions at all, whether they're treated or...? No, no. no. OK. And any chronic illness in the family, such as cancer or diabetes? No, or no, nothing. Do you mind me asking, are your parents still alive? No. no. And what ages, please? Uh, mother was 81 and my father... <laughs> Sorry. Um... Oh, don't worry, I often forget what ages my parents are. Yeah, I, d I told the GP the other day. Um... It can just be a rough number, don't worry. We've, I can go back through your records. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, I, the, the, the late 70s, I think. That's fine. Lovely. Uh, are you on any medication at all? Uh, no, I'm not, no. And have you got any allergies? No. Lovely. Do you smoke? No, not for 30 years. Well done, you. Thank you. <laughs> and do you drink alcohol at all? Occasional glass of wine. Okay, days. And so... As far as we'd say, like, an onset of symptoms, when would you say you first noticed anything? Well, that was a few weeks ago. I, um, I, I, I'd been out driving and, um, well, this is going to sound a bit strange, but uh, I got this sort of haziness around. A bit sort of Star Trekish, I suppose. <laughs> and um, so I stopped the car and then uh, I just didn't... I just didn't recognise anything. I, 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 I mean, I knew retrospect where I was, yeah. but I just, nothing made any sense to me, and that, that must have lasted for 10 or 15 minutes, I guess. Yeah. And, sorry, did you say that was three to four weeks? Oh, at least, yeah. A yeah. bit, bit longer, I think, yes. And would you say you've had anything since, any reoccurrence? No, n not like that, but I have had a couple of incidences where um, 
I've, I've, I've gone to pick things up, cutlery and, and, and pens, and um, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's not where I, where I think it is. Does, right. does, that, make, does okay. that make sense? No, no, no. Um, it was, would you say it's sort of like a reflex thing, or is it that your sort of the, the eyesight and where you're seeing it is different? I, 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 don't, I don't really know. It's, um, That's okay, don't worry. Um, and any numbness? Or tingling in the no, face? no, no. Lovely. And have you had any head trauma at all? Any Never. Headaches or anything like that? No, no. Any high temperatures? No. Lovely. And lastly, really, sort of, has your mood changed at all? I've, I've felt down since it's happened. If I'm honest, I've, I've not felt as good as I normally do. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's playing on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Right. As I said. I can't say how long this is going to be. We are in the ruling out phase at the moment. Sure, sure. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions. Uh, I just have one. Um, my, my daughter's um, concerned about me driving. Yeah, so legally, you don't have to tell the DVLA until you've had a diagnosis. Right. You're obviously not in the phase yet where you've had one. Um, I mean, You've got here that obviously your first episode that you've noticed is in a car. Yes, yes. Um, I understand, you know, you might need the car, that, but I would just err on the side of caution with that one in case it is a trigger or anything like that. Right, right. And also in the meantime, I would say some people have found really helpful and actually sped up the process is if you could sort of record any time that you have an incident. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we can sort of keep a log of it all. Sure, sure. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can do that, certainly. That'd be great. OK. Thank you so much. Pleasure. If you could go down to the nurse's waiting room. Right. Um, for your blood tests and urine samples, please, and then we'll get you booked in for a memory test. OK. OK? Yeah, thank you. You've been very right. helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Just down to the left there. Thank you. All right, thank you. I mean, straight away, it was like, you know, welcome through the door, how are you doing? Yep. And it was very considerate when they were asking about parents saying, do you mind if I ask? You know, yep. it was just a lot more considerate than the first performance. Yep. And, and substantially, what's different? What does the doctor get out of it that she didn't have before? Um, he's a lot more cooperative. He's more cooperative, so she learns more, doesn't she? Yes, definitely. Yeah. He feels more comfortable, so yeah. he speaks up more. Yeah, she learns more, doesn't she? Yeah. Which, uh, when, we, when that happened in the rehearsal room for the first time, we went, oh, of course, makes perfect sense. But, but because cause it's part of it, isn't it? The, the history is important. So it's quite a simple scene, but again, it, it, it spins a bit. There's no substantial difference, but you go out of yes. one feeling absolutely livid. Yes. And you go out of the other feeling a little depressed. Yeah. And a bit shocked. Yeah, less than that, I would have, I would, yeah. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, just feeling, oh, OK, well, they're, they're going to do stuff. Here we stuff. go. Here we yeah. go. Let's, let's, get it, oh, let's get it going then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is purely and simply the attitude of the, of the practitioner, isn't it? It's, it's sort of like the opposite of the relative. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the relative needs to slightly remove themselves. Yep. Or remove their own emotions onto it, I suppose. Yeah. <coughs> I think you're right. I, I think you're right. It is different. The, the, the big difference between the professional and the, um, the relative is that the relative, <coughs> the relative has to live with the relative and the professional doesn't have to live with the patient. Yeah. 